If laser scanning is used to capture a crime scene and the data is used as scientific analysis and subsequently presented as evidence in a criminal trial, what are the requirements for accuracy and precision? Are all laser scanners up to the task? I'm Christine Grail with Leica Geosystems and here with me today on HXGN TV to talk about these and other hard-hitting questions about the use of laser scanning in criminal investigations is Michael Cunningham from Leeds LLC. Welcome, Michael. Uh, thanks, Chris. It's great to be here at Hexago. So the first question I have for you is about the use of laser scanning in criminal investigations. Why is this topic becoming more and more popular among uh, public safety? Well, when we look at crime scene investigation and criminal investigations in, uh, in general, there's an expectation by the court that the crime scene will be documented thoroughly, accurately. Um, so, in as is condition, the way it was found by, by the police when they first arrived, uh, that enables other people to view the scene, uh, to make judgments, to reach their own conclusions in a court of law. Um, so, when we look at laser scanning, it's really brought a whole new dimension to how that's done. So, laser scanners can capture the scene in 360 degree images and also in point clouds and then you know, with the proper laser scan you could reach really scientifically accurate conclusions through those measurements uh, that could be gained from those point clouds. So laser scanning has brought a whole new dimension to crime scene investigation and it's really become a pretty prevalent in the, in the crime scene investigation community. Well, and the more that public safety professionals learn about laser scanning, the more they're interested in applying it in their own agencies, but they also have some concerns. And so not everyone has adopted the technology yet. What are some of the biggest misconceptions that you think public safety professionals have about laser scanning? Yeah, there is uh, definitely some misconceptions out there. And probably the biggest ones would be uh, the initial cost of the equipment and also the complexity and learning how to use it and, and deploying it to a scene. Um, so when we talk about the complexity, today's laser scanners, as we know, um, they're self-contained units, really portable, easily transported to a crime scene. Hard drives built into them with computer operating systems and them touch screens. Uh, really made uh, the, the interface between the user and the machine has really become pretty simple. Um, I've spent some time training crime scene investigators and in using laser scanners, and within a day or maybe two days, they can become pretty proficient at deploying a laser scanner to the scene. Um, the complexity in processing the data later on is, is a skill that's built up over time. So learning software applications, you know, that's something that crime scene investigators will build up expertise as they use the uh, instrument more and more. The other misconception probably is cost, and uh, it's true that uh, the initial equipment cost uh, for laser scanning equipment and accessories um, is significant. But when you look at the value it brings to crime scene investigation, and then you think about the, the length of time this, the equipment will be in service, um, it really becomes extremely manageable. So uh, let's say at a laser scanner that we have agencies that are scanning for seven years now with the laser scanner. And even if they were only processing two or three crime scenes a week with, the, with that scanner, the overall cost to process a crime scene and laser scanning may be down to, say, $100 or so. You know, so is it worth $100 to be able to document the homicide scene in three dimensions and be able to take a jury back into it later on and let them see the scene in 3D, acquire measurements, answer questions? The answer is pretty obvious, yeah, it's, it's very valuable. So when, when, when you can think of cost, agencies should really think more about the value it brings to the investigation than the, the initial cost uh, of the equipment. Sure, and you also have the speed of documentation and the completeness of documentation as well. Yeah, you could even offset that cost and maybe, maybe even turn it into a, uh, a, a, a positive because as investigators get more and more proficient when using the laser scanner at the scene, they save time. So the time it may take to hand draw a sketch of the scene and pull a tape measure across the scene to take maybe hundreds of measurements uh, could be done in maybe minutes with a, with a laser scanner. So there's a cost savings there with just manpower savings. Sure. Well, when you have an agency who decides that they're ready to make the leap, they see the value, what are some of the key criteria that they need to keep in mind when they're looking at a laser scanner? 
Um, well, all laser scanners are not created equally. So in the crime scene investigation, you know, I equate it sometimes to cameras. There's a lot of cameras on the market. They all take photographs. Um, and there's also several laser scanners, and they all capture laser scans. But they're not, not all created equally, so you have to look at what's important to you. Um, what's your accu accuracy requirements? What's the data requirements? How will you store the data? What will you do with it? Um, so one, one thing becoming more and more common in crime scene investigation now is the need to validate equipment before it's used at a scene. Not all laser scanners will allow you to do that. There are some, like a laser scanner, for example, will let you um, cal uh, validate the scanner before you deploy it at the scene, before it actually captures measurements that you're going to use to reach conclusions about somebody's guilt or innocence. Um, you could validate that those measurements are actually going to be accurate. Things like tilt compensation and twin target pole, NIST certified traceable measurements become very important. And agencies definitely need to consider that before they get into laser scanning. Sure, that makes a lot of sense. Now, as a result of recommendations made by the National Commission of Forensic Science, there's an initiative underway to requ require all forensic service providers in the U.S. to become accredited by the year 2020. How does this initiative affect the integration of laser scanning into criminal investigations? Yeah, it's definitely going to have an impact. And yesterday, uh, Dean Gialamis, uh, one of the nation's foremost forensic experts, uh, was right here at Hexagon and presented on that very topic. And back in November of last year, the Attorney General uh, agreed to the Commission's recommendation that uh, accreditation be mandatory for all forensic service providers. And crime scene investigators are a forensic service provider. Now, they operate generally outside of the laboratory, but now are being brought into the envelope under forensic service providers. So some of the requirements that uh, they'll need to meet accreditation standards uh, will be to validate equipment. Um, have known accuracy. So when you deploy a laser scanner to the scene, what's the accuracy of the measurements that you're expected it's going to be able to capture? Um, is it known? Has it been validated? Are there papers on that to prove it? So, and not just simple accuracy. When an investigator is testifying, they'll have to understand things like positional accuracy, 3D positional accuracy, angular accuracy, distance accuracy. Um, it, it, it's not just a simple statement. So, the, so, so there are things there that are going to be important in, in, in accreditation. And having the right equipment that will be able to meet those standards will be very important. Well, with the need for accreditation, are there any other questions that public safety professionals should be asking as they take a look at new technology, laser scanning, and whatever else might be coming down the road? Yeah. Um, as, as the accreditation standards come down, there's different uh, ISO standards that will apply. So they need to look at these standards and understand what 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 it will mean. The Attorney General's recommendation mandates accreditation by the year 2020 for forensic science providers. So within that short time frame, any equipment that's being acquired is going to be able going to need to be able to meet those standards in a real short time frame. So can you use? instruments at the uh, scene to trace your measurements back to national standards, back to NIST traceable standards. Can you validate the instrument at the scene before it's used? After it's used, what will you do with the data? How will you store it? How will you maintain it? Once the data is captured, it's considered evidence. So how will it be uh, verified that, it, that it's valid by the time it's collected, all the way through the time of storage till the time it's presented in court? Has it been altered? Where has it been? Can you produce the originals? So Cyclone Software happens to be very good at maintaining the original files. And like IMS 360 also, the original files are never altered. You could create presentations and you could enhance data, but the originals are always there. It's always possible to step backwards and go back to the original that was captured at the scene. That's critical to allowing other professionals to be able to take the original data and reach the same conclusions that the crime scene investigators reached. So. These are all very critical considerations. Now, you have a new book that was recently published that addresses a lot of these different issues along with some other topics. Do you want to talk about that book for a moment? Uh, yes, yeah, sure. I actually brought a copy along here. So it's Crime Scene Unit Management uh, Path Forward. And when we talk about the changes that are coming in forensics, they all stem back to a uh, National Academy of Science report that was released in 2009 titled Improving Forensic Science in the United States, A Path Forward. 
So I collaborated with this book with uh, two other authors, Ed Wallace and, and uh, Dan Baggiano, both uh, lifetime experienced crime scene investigators. And when we looked around, we realized that there's a lot of text out there about how to process crime scenes, how to collect fingerprints, how to collect DNA evidence, how to handle it, how to test it. But there wasn't many texts out there on how to manage the entity, the crime scene unit entity. Um, and especially along the path forward where accreditation will become mandated, how do you take your unit from the point it's at through an accreditation process to meet new national standards that are forthcoming? And how do you accomplish uh, actually improving forensic science? So that's what the book's about. We're excited and we're hoping that uh, it'll be helpful for the practitioners in the field. It certainly sounds that way. Now, where can people get a copy? Is that available through Amazon.com? It's available at uh, Amazon.com, uh, Rutledge okay. Publishing. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Well, thank you so much, Mike. I appreciate your time. Thank you, Kristen. For more information about criminal investigations, please visit leadsllc.com. You can watch more HXGN TV episodes at hxgntv.com. Thank you for watching.